In behalf of the San Diego Spiritist uh, Society, we welcome you all, the ones joining us here today and also through the media. Uh, we will start uh, today's uh, talk with an opening prayer and a message. And we'll do that now. Well, today we're going to be talking about the parable of the sower. And uh, it does uh, include four uh, uh, different situations. And uh, I want to read it clearly because sometimes uh, my mind betrays me or sometimes I have the tendency to put some input of my own, so I just want to say it exactly how it's written in the scriptures. And uh, the number one, it says that a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, he, some uh, seeds fell along the path, and the birds came and devoured them. So that is the first one. It's just, uh, I imagine he was walking on this path and then some of the seeds just kind of fell on the ground. But since they fell on the ground, immediately the birds, they came and start eating the seeds so they didn't produce anything. And uh, it... Uh, the explanation for this, it says clearly here that when anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. This is what sown along the path. And uh, there's a clue or there's a um, word here that called my attention, says, and does not understand it. And uh, I've heard so many times myself that uh, in different uh, uh, churches or different people that they 
they read uh, the scriptures, but they give the, their own understanding, their own idea of what they understood when they read this, this particular passage. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we te have a tendency to give uh, our own interpretation. And since the, the scriptures, they being translated from, uh, from the Hebrew, from the Greeks, from whatever that, come, uh, that scripture came from, in every single uh, interpretation, we'll have a different meaning or we'll have the tendency to deviate the exact words that, it, that is being meant. And the, when I heard, uh, when I read this, what it says, they do not understand it. Sometimes there are so many people, they really do not understand the scriptures. The scriptures are very easy to understand, very clearly. And that's the reason why Jesus starts saying these things, so that people can understand. It's easily for someone, even to, for a, a youngster, he might be able to understand these words. Because the relationship here on the first uh, uh, topic is talking about a bird coming down and eat the seed. Anybody can understand that. But when he, got, <coughs> he gives the explanation that whatever is being sown in their own heart is lost because they did not understand that passage. Then in number two, it says, other seeds fell on the rocky ground where they did not have much soil and immediately they sprang up since they had no depth of soil, but when the sun rose, it, they were scorched, scorched. And since they had no root, they withered away. And it says, as for the seed uh, sown on rocky ground, this is the one that who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures for a while. And then when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately he falls away. And I can uh, relate that to myself. Because some sometimes somebody comes and whispers something uh, heartwarming to myself. And at the beginning, I feel the joy because I n immediately notice that there's something that is beneficial for myself, that I can take advantage of what I'm, I'm listening. But tomorrow, I forget about it. Or if I didn't forget, sometimes, they, as it says here, the tribulations, they come. I start paying attention more to, uh, of the tribulation and what uh, will be the consequences, consequences of that tri tribulation to me or my family or my friends. And I forget what I learned the day before, what they whispered to me. So that is the second aspect that is talking about, that sometimes we receive the information that is good for us, but when we have uh, uh, problems, uh, you name uh, uh, sickness, the pass away of a, f uh, uh, a loved one, and then we start getting ourselves immersed into that situation and we forget about the word that we, that we learned. And the third one, it talks about that other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. And uh, I wanna, uh, uh, when I read this, I started thinking about myself, well, what, what does it mean? The seeds, they fell on the, on the thorns, or among the thorns, and they were choked. And they give us the explanation, it says, <coughs> As for what uh, was so, uh, sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the curse of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and proves 
unfruitful. And this is another thing that happened to us. Because sometimes, yes, we go and help others, we practice charity, we do all these very good things. But sometimes when we get close to uh, those temptations that they're on, uh, for instance, on television for great savings, or we go to the mall, or we pay attention to this uh, late uh, uh, artist that is his, the way he's, the person is dressing or uh, hair, uh, 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 the hairdo, we start paying attention to those and we start deviating from what we learned before. The world has a lot of things to offer us. And in the gospel, he only uh, uh, gives us a lot, but that things that we may not seem to be paying attention to that that much. That as people, they, the mercadio techniques that they use, they call our whole attention. For instance, I can say that if they want to sell this beautiful car, even though it's not really that functionable for our needs, but they put a very nice uh, uh, model on a bikini next to the car. So now, are we looking at the car or are we looking to the bikini? But it's just for us to, to deceit our thoughts, thinking that we may attract beautiful women, beautiful models, if we buy that car. That's what they want us to think. Whereas the gospel wants us to elevate, really, our way of thinking and for our own good, it's been written for all of us. The aspect number four says that other see seeds fell on good soil and produced grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty, some thirty. And uh, also says something very fundamental for me that it says that who ha who has ears. Let him hear. In other words, that sometimes we listen to the words of the gospel, but we did not really pay attention what it really means for us. Uh, the more I have read the gospel myself, the more rich my spirit has been increasingly stronger. I try to have the tendency of trying to memorize the passages, but sometimes I forget them. My memory can last probably maybe a week, a month maybe, but since other things start happening in my life, I keep forgetting those, so I need to go back and redo and reread again these passages so they can be impressed not only in my mind but in my spirit. Then with that, in, with that, I can produce the seed that is being planted in my soul. And this number uh, category, the number four, it says that uh, was uh, sown in, in good soil. This is the one that who hears the word and understands it. That's the clue thing. We have first understand what we're reading. Because sometimes I used to read a lot. Uh, let's say I was reading something about uh, uh, ulcers in the stomach. And my book was very thick and the chapter was very long and I started reading, boom, 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 boom. And at the end, I said, well, I read it. I had to stop and say, well, what did I learn? What, did, what is it talking about? I could read, you know, all along, but at the end, if I didn't get the message, then I don't have anything. I cannot go back and talk to people about it because I didn't understand it. Uh, so first, uh, before we, we start reading the gospel, reading the scriptures, I have myself the tendency to first meditate first a little bit. 
and asking for the necessary light that comes from above in order for me to understand that passage or to understand the message. But not only understand it, understand the message, but also to put it in practice. Because I can, I can probably know all the gospel readings, you know, back and forth, but if I don't teach that, if I don't work on uh, doing what it says, then it's nobody's getting the benefit of it. It doesn't matter if you've produced, you know, so many um, uh, results from what I read, but if I don't practice those teachings, then, then it just gets stuck. And one of the main things that they ask us or we're being called for is to do the work, not only to understand it, but do the work. Because if I don't do the work, then I'm just talking to you and nothing comes out of that. It's just like the guy that is, uh, that is talking to his adolescent son and says, hey, listen, do not smoke because smoke is bad. And he sees me every, every morning lighting a cigarette. I cannot teach like that because if I don't teach with the example, then I'm not really teaching. And uh, I also want to read on this, uh, uh, on this topic what it talks about to us as spiritists. And it says very clearly, it says, this parable finds an equally just application in the different categories of a spiritists. It is not the emblem of those fixated only on material spirit phenomena. When I start talking to people about the spiritism, a hundred percent I can say some people they will misjudge what I'm telling them. And the reason why they miss the, the, this misunderstanding is because they do not understand. They don't have no clue of what spiritism is all about. They do not understand that spiritism is the love of Jesus Christ put, uh, put him uh, to work. It's a manifestation of what we learn about the gospel to our friends, to our neighbors, to our enemies even. Because Jesus Christ, uh, he asked us, well, love your, your, uh, you, <clears throat> your neighbor as, uh, as yourself. But he went beyond. He said, love your enemies. And with that, my friends, uh, is something that is very, very hard to take in consideration. Because if somebody comes and hits me on my head, do I have to go back and express uh, to him my love and say, I'm sorry, I, I'm sorry that you hit me. Instead of me trying to defend myself uh, onto that uh, 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 aggression. And Jesus Christ say, said that, love your enemy because we had the perfect example right at this very day. We're uh, all uh, feeling the results of just a pandemic crisis that was on the world. And it, as soon as that starts feeling that it's coming down, that things supposed to be coming back to normal, then the wars, the war between uh, uh, Russia and, and uh, Ukraine starts. If they did understand, if Russia, the people from Russia understood that we have to love our enemies, there will be no more wars whatsoever. In order for two people to fight, there should be one person that is uh, trying to uh, 
create danger to the other one, but this one has to respond back. And uh, somebody said before that we cannot uh, extinguish fire with more fire. It's, it's my clearly understanding that in order for people to go into war, they both have to retaliate one another. But if one understands that, no, I have to love my enemies, then nothing initiates. And it's uh, very difficult to understand sometimes. Only by very deep uh, meditation of what love is and what Jesus Christ wants want us to deliver to our neighbors, to all, every single uh, children of his, with that in mind, then we should love one another. And things, they may go better. Uh, sometimes I go so far that I, I, I would like to imagine this world, this whole world, living like that. That everybody helping one another without hesitation, without hate, without taking advantage, money-wise, even health-wise. Because if the strong person can help a weak person, then the, the thing start getting into balance. But we have the tendency, one has to be higher and the other one has to be lower. And the one that is high up here doesn't want to go back down because he's uh, worried about this other one may grow up and, and I, he may be able to see me low. So that's uh, our mind start thinking about these things. And one of the powerful things is about uh, that we have as he talks about the riches. And don't take me wrong about the riches because God doesn't want us to be poor. There's nothing wrong to have money. It is just what we do with it. Honestly, myself, I wouldn't like to be with very big amounts of money myself. My goodness, my, let's say somebody comes tomorrow, or, I, or if I hit the lottery, and I get $190 million tomorrow, believe me, I would not sleep tonight at all. Just thinking about what am I going to do with all that money? What am I going to buy? Do I have to get a house? Do I have to travel? So many things will come up to your mind. Oh my goodness, I have to, I have to hire security. Because people, they will know that I have money. They're going to come and try to rob me or uh, do extortion to me. Or I won't be able to even go to the store by myself with peace in my mind, thinking about what is what costs more, if this uh, 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 jacket or this little sweater. I may just have to say, well, I want to get all the things in the store if I have money. We will have no, uh, no fulfillment of money once we start getting it to us. If, if we live just like we live right now, normally what we have, because God provides us with just what we want. No, I'm sorry, what, what he provides us with what we need, not what we want. We may want something totally different, but he has a different plan for us. And sometimes he says, we start uh, talking back to him and says, why you're not giving me this because I be, I've been uh, following uh, the commandments. I've been practicing charity since I was young. I've been doing all this. I help my neighbors. I visit a uh, uh, sick person in the hospitals. Why don't I have a beautiful car that I want? A beautiful house that I, that I want if I follow all these things. Well, he's not, God is not someone that we have to bargain with. We cannot put conditions to him. He knows what we, what we need, and that's exactly what he gave us. 
And uh, going back again, uh, that uh, some of us, they, they want to come to the spirit uh, society just to see a spectacular findings inside there. For instance, some people, they want to come here because they know that some seers, some revelators, some people, they can see the future. They may, if I go there, they may tell me if I'm going to get married next year or not. Or they might tell me what's going to be uh, the next uh, numbers of the lottery. And they come here, or, oh, I might be able to communicate with my loved one that I lost 10 years ago. We will get exactly what we deserve. Nothing more, nothing less. But if we, if we work on ourselves, in our, uh, our own soul, to elevate to a higher degree of the spirituality, we might be able to encounter some more better and beautiful things that we think of. There are some things in the spiritual world that is are waiting for us to go there and progress. For instance, I've read that the music that is here in this world uh, as a different is so, deep, so much different in the spiritual world. You cannot compare. It's totally, totally different down there. More joyful, more pleasant. Now, if you go to the spiritual world, you, you may go into that with no ears, with no eyes. So how is that possible that the spiritual music will be a lot better if you have no ears? Well, you do have some, some other means of listening with your spirit, which is a lot greater and will have no, no, uh, no means of uh, taking you off of those notes that can be heard with your spirit. The scope will be a lot greater. There's so many things our human body will not be able to to uh, get our senses that are so limited. But once we free it from the, from the uh, physical uh, body, then we'll be able to free and our spirit will be, the capabilities will be a hundred times a lot more greater than what we can accomplish. Uh, some of them, they, uh, as I said before, they come here to just out of curiosity. And sometimes uh, by curiosity, we go to church to see what that church has to offer to us. We go there to try to hear what we want to hear, not what is being taught. And uh, I've seen so many people, they come to church so disappointed. Well, they're talking about this weird things. They may come to the spiritual society of San Diego and they say, these things are more weirder than others that I've heard in my church. And why do they think like that? It's impressive to me that they get disappointed because they do not understand. And they, they do not understand because they do not have the desire of learning, taking the time to, to pond onto those things that m they may think out of our uh, reach of understanding, but if they try to put a little bit of effort, they might be able to understand the whole thing, little by little, as we said before, precept by precept. Some other people, they may come here seeking only dazzling spirit communications. If we do not understand the gospel fully, how can you understand a spiritual communication? How can you understand that we're immersed in an ocean of all this communication ideas from the spiritual world? We are immersed. The 
physical realm is immersed in the spiritual world, in the spiritual realm. So we're part of that. As we are not only part of this uh, uh, earth, but we are part and immersed in a whole universe. We, can even, we cannot even comprehend. So the, the things that we have to really understand is a lot greater than we, we can think of. If somebody says that, oh, well, I know a lot, we won't be able to believe that because there's a lot of things we still do not comprehend. Like, they say, well, my mind, and then touch the head, thinking that the mind is inside of the brain, an organ that is only a receptor. The memory is not even storaged in our brain either. Everything goes to the spirit, and the spirit knows everything, records everything. He's the one that moves our physical body, and our physical body is the response of what he is, he is ordering us to do. Um, and I want to finish this talk saying that for those who find the advice very good and admire it, but apply it to others, but not to themselves. That means if I have the knowledge, if I only apply that knowledge to myself, I'm not doing anything. I need to apply it to others. I need to let the people know that we have been created eternal. Not our physical body, but our spirit. It will live eternally because it is a creation from God, which is eternal as well. And that gives me a lot of pleasure for me to start understanding that. That no matter what things they may come to my, to, into my life, but if I take it uh, uh, seriously and thinking about that this is not the end of uh, the dead, the, Dying is not the end of the world or the end of the person. Then we can say and have faith that we'll see the loss of loved ones that they have passed, that I will see them again. That gives me a lot of uh, satisfaction myself. Yes, we do mourn those that we loved and they're already passed. Yes, I'm not saying you get very happy about that or change your way of feeling. No, what I'm referring to is the fact that, yes, you're still loving them, but have the, the faith and the assurance that you will see them again, you will talk to them, you will hug them again, you will do everything you were doing before. And that's very nice. That's something that God has given us that, um, that opportunity. And then it says, finally, of those for whom these instructions are like seeds sown in good soil, they will yield plenty of fruit. Well, my, my friends, uh, it is my pleasure for me to be addressing this beautiful uh, aspects of this parable. And all I can take uh, right now is that God loves us so much he takes care of every single one of his children. If you have troubles, you have uh, problems, don't feel that despair. You always, you can always count on God's help for every single things in your life, whether they're happiness, whether it will be sadness, or anything in between. He will not forget you. Because sometimes if you have a trouble, they'll, he'll say, why? You're doing this to me now. I used to be like that. I was, if something went wrong and I made a big mistake, I started getting very mad, very mad myself, myself because I, I erred. 
But after I start understanding and learning, I said, well, the question is not why that happened to me, why I made that mistake. It is not why, it is what for. That's the clue. What I had to pass through this sorrow, what is the purpose of it? And the answer to that is for our, our own betterment, for us to become stronger, for us to have the, the necessary understanding of that problem came to us because we need to learn more and more every time. My, the end of this uh, talk is just the understanding that God is, is, His Son Jesus Christ is just pure love for His children. So even though maybe your companion may hate you, God loves you. Maybe your companion or your family d d does not love you, God loves you. And he's the one that's going to be in front of us, helping us out in every single problem that we may have. And may we also and drop those seeds into the good soil in our souls in order for us to produce. And I say these things in the name, in the sacred name of Jesus Christ. Amen.